So at the nine o'clock service, I said, let's just take a deep breath. So we're in round two here. And it feels good. It is good to be in church with you this morning. I want to share a few things before I get started. The first is that I've been asked, what do we call you? What do we call you? So I would say, call me Pastor Julie. You can call me Reverend Julie, or you can call me Reverend Boone. I actually respond pretty much anything. But the preferred is Pastor Julie. So if that works for you, that works for me. And then many of you have asked, how can we help you? What can we do for you? And this is one thing that you can do for me, is that you can wear your name tags. (laughs) And every time we meet, if you would, tell me your name because I need to get to know your name, and the only way I'm going to get to know your name is if you keep repeating it to me. And after a couple of months, if I don't know your name, then there's a pretty good chance I've got more problems than I realize. (laughs) I also want to give a special thank you to Greg Lucas and Staff Paris Relations for their help with this transition. I know that they have worked hard to make this happen, and I am very, very grateful for it. One of the traditions at annual conference is the reading of the appointments. This process has changed over the years, but it is still a holy time for churches and for pastors. It happens on the last day of annual conference, and it is a time when pastors will be on the floor of the conference. The bishop will come forward alongside the district superintendent who will be representing that district, And as the bishop reads the names, the pastors stand, and they acknowledge the receiving of their appointments. Now, by this point in the process, the pastors already know where they're going, and they already have a pretty good idea about where they're they're being appointed to and what to find there. They would have had conversations with their district superintendent. They would have had conversations with their staff parish relations committee. And they would have, dare I say, scoured um, the church's website and maybe stalked the social media sites to see if they knew, (laughs) to find out more about the church. And maybe even some of them have dared to drive into the parking lot of the church just to catch a peek. There probably would even have been folks stopping them in the halls of annual conference, letting them know about their new church. They would have said, hey, you know, my brother goes to your church or my sister goes to your new church. Or, hey, you need to get to know Miss Betty because Miss Betty's going to help you out. Or they might even say something along the lines of, you need to watch out for John because he'll talk your ear off. (laughs) Elders go where they are sent. That's the call in the United Methodist Church. But before you ever begin your first Sunday with the church, you at least have some idea about what to expect. When I hear a text like this morning, I wonder, though, if any one of us really understands what it means to go where sent. Jesus says to his disciples, let us go across to the other side. Let's go. We're set in sail. We got places to go, people to heal, good news to share. There is no time to waste. And those disciples, they get in the boat and they go. There are no phone calls, there's no text messages, there's no calling of their friends to find out about what awaits them on the other side. They simply go. That's why I find this text so perplexing. They get into the boat and they have no idea where they're going. In fact, they don't even ask questions. I don't know about you, but I probably would ask some questions. You know, about what time do you think it's going to be when we get to the other side? Or when we get to the other side, you know, is there going to be a meal? Are we going to have some dinner? Who's going to feed us? And by the way, where are we going to sleep? Because, you know, we need to know these things. They don't even ask a single question. They just go. Complete and utter trust. But then a storm, a storm comes on the water. And many of us know this story. And the water begins to fill the boat, and there's wind. And even this is scary for experienced fishermen. They're scared. Maybe in their mind, they're remembering the stories from the Hebrew scriptures about Noah and the flood or the great Leviathan, or maybe even Jonah and the whale. 
And so what do they do is they wake Jesus up. Jesus is in the stern of the boat. There's a cushion. He is sound asleep. He has had a long day. He's been preaching and he's been teaching. And this storm comes upon the water and they shake him and they say to him, teacher, teacher, don't you care that we're perishing? Now I understand that they're scared and I understand that they're going to drown. But don't you think they should have thought about that? before they got into the boat in the first place and decided to follow Jesus to an unknown destination? What did they expect? Smooth sailing? They were all, after all, set in sail to that unknown destination. That should have at least caused them, at least I think, a little bit of concern. When I received my call from the district superintendent, telling me that I was coming to Marietta, in full transparency, I was surprised. Well, really, I was shocked. (laughs) Because I felt like those disciples in the boat, and I wanted to wake Jesus up and say, what are you thinking? For several reasons. First, I hadn't planned on moving. Hadn't planned on moving. I thought I had at least a couple more years at my church. Things were good. I was very comfortable. And I'm not saying it's perfect, but the ship was sailing smoothly. But then, not only was I being reappointed, but I was being reappointed to Marietta first. It's twice the size of my former church. It's a prominent church in the conference, and, you know, I, don't, I didn't know a whole lot about Cobb County other than the horrendous traffic. <laughs> and the fact that they were building the Braves Stadium here. I did know a little bit about Marietta. I knew about the square, and I like the square. I will be spending some time up there. But see, I guess I thought that before I decided to get in the boat and go where I was sent, I guess I should have thought about it. Because, see, I wanted to get into the boat, and I wanted to be the captain. Maybe you've been thinking the same thing. A number of years ago, I went to Israel, and we took a boat ride. We took a boat ride from Bethsaida into Capernaum. And lo and behold, believe it or not, there was a storm. And we were on this boat, and the water started to splash into the boat, and it started to rain. And the captain asked all of us to sit down, so we sat down. We made sure that we got our our raincoats on. And I began to look around at all those in the boat and to see their faces. And I noticed that on each one of their faces was a smile. It was like this smug little smile, like they had a secret. Do you know that kind of a smile? I got a secret. And what I discovered was that that smile on their face was looking at one another and saying, we know this story, and we know how this story ends. Because amazingly, nobody was concerned or afraid. We knew that Jesus was in the boat. We knew that Jesus would wake up, and we knew that Jesus would rebuke and calm the storm. We know the story of our faith. We know that what Jesus can and has done and what Jesus will continue to do The scriptures bear witness to this. The church bears witness to this. And our very lives of faith bear witness to this. It's any wonder that the early church considered the boat to be a symbol for the church. Because when Jesus sends us out, sometimes it's not smooth sailing. Sometimes things can be a bit rocky. Sometimes we can be a little unsure of things. Sometimes we can be afraid. And even sometimes we could lack faith. And maybe even sometimes we wonder about the appointment process. And sometimes we forget that we are not the captain of this boat. It's time to set sail, says Jesus. Let us go to the other side. It was Henry Nouwen, the great theologian, who said, Let's not be afraid to receive each day's surprise, whether it comes to us as sorrow or as joy. It will open a new place in our hearts, a place where we can welcome new friends and celebrate more fully our own humanity. And so after my initial shock 
and surprise of learning that I would be joining you as your senior minister here at Marietta First, I began to get very, very excited. Excited to share our lives together, excited to serve alongside you, excited to grow deeper in faith with you, and I am not ashamed to admit that, yes, I did scour the website and I stalked the social media sites, and when the news got out um, with the pastors, I called every single pastor friend I knew to find out about this church, and I even, Ted and I, drove to the church and circled the parking lot, and people were coming out, and I ducked. (laughs) He says, what are you doing? I don't want them to see me. Oh, they're not gonna notice you. But here's what I learned. I learned that everybody and their brother literally has some connection to Marietta First. Pastors stopped me in the hallways at annual conference to let me know that they were members here when they received their call into the ministry. I learned that there are PKs, preacher's kids here. And it seems that there are a lot of family and friends from our connectional system here. Brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and grandparents. The more I heard (laughs) about how many people were connected to Marietta, I began to think, well, I guess I better not mess this up. Because if I do, not only will the entire conference know about it, but so will all their family and friends. Lord, have mercy on me. (laughs) But I also learned this. I also learned that we have a lot in common. Like you, I am passionate about missions, and I want the world to know and experience the saving love of Jesus Christ. And I love the way this church is in missions, and I look forward to getting to know all about missions and the opportunities and serving alongside you. And like you, I am also passionate about our youth and our children. I believe that our children need to be anchored in the faith, and it is absolutely critical in today's world for the church to provide a nurturing place for our kids and for our young people so that they can experience the amazing love and grace of Jesus. And like you, I love the scriptures. I want to study the scriptures. I want them to be a part of who I am and also the importance of fellowship. I have friends that have been visiting Marietta First, and they have been astounded at the Sunday school selection. And so I know that there's an amazing Sunday school program and ministry here at uh, Marietta First, and I am really looking forward to getting to know you. Many of you have already invited me to your Sunday school classes, and I'm very excited about that. But I am excited um, that this church is passionate about Scripture and fellowship. But I would also add that I also share your core values, that we are to worship God in awe and mystery, and that our best lives are lived in community, and that there is a true self waiting to be restored within each one of us into that image of God to which we were created. Through this time of transition, I have had the pleasure of meeting and getting to know Dr. Sam Matthews. I am grateful for his support and his encouragement of my appointment. He has been nothing but kind and gracious to me and has offered me his full support. I can't tell you how much this means to me. Transitions can be awkward, and sometimes we don't really know how to talk about them. And so I want you to know that I know that Dr. Sam Matthews has had a huge impact on your life and it's okay to talk about him, and it's okay to bring him up in a conversation. This reminds me of my very first appointment, though, when I was appointed as a part-time local pastor to my home church, Johns Creek United Methodist Church. I was being appointed there as the pastor of Invite, which is hospitality and outreach. And I remember Nancy, a member of the church, coming into my office and peering her head and saying, congratulations, but you have some pretty big shoes to fill. Everybody loves Mabel. And she was talking about Dr. Mabel Foster. And Dr. Mabel Foster is one of the great women in our conference who's now long retired. In fact, she had begun her retirement when I um, filled into her position. 
She paved the way for someone like me to be in a church like Marietta First. So I said to Nancy, I said, Nancy, I love Mabel too, but you know what? I can't fill her shoes. So I'm going to take her shoes, and I'm going to put them over to the side, and I'm going to put on my own shoes. But I'm going to honor her ministry here, and I'm going to do all that I can to build upon the ministry that she has nurtured and developed in this church. The same is true for Dr. Sam Matthews. Y'all, I can't fill his shoes. They wouldn't fit anyway. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those shoes and I'm going to put them to the side. And I'm going to do all that I can to honor his great ministry in this church and then to build upon all that he has nurtured and developed in this church. Jesus is calling us to once again go across to the other side. He's asking us to go to uncharted territories. We don't know what the other side looks like. We don't know what awaits us. But we can be sure that Jesus is in the boat with us. If Jesus can calm a storm, if Jesus can rebuke the wind, then any fears that we might have, we just need to throw them overboard. Because Jesus is in control of this boat. But there's one thing that we do need to remember, you and me. We're not the captain of this ship. All we're being asked to do is to be faithful, is to trust, and to go wherever it is that God is leading this church. And so, my friends, the boat is set in sail. Are you ready? Let's go.